So I wanted to put together this video of five things that I've learned that have massively helped me to make professional sounding mixes and recordings. And these five things cost absolutely nothing. And you can start doing them today. These are five huge aha moments for me and things that I think most of the time when you're starting off mixing and producing, you don't do. And even a lot of uh, people that have been producing, one of my friends is a professional music producer here in Nashville, and I've given him some of these tips and he was like, oh wow, I, I never really thought about doing that. So maybe these have been overlooked for you. The first tip is that Omni, rather than cardioid, is often a better choice when recording things. Now, I had overlooked Omni as a polar pattern for years. I pretty much only recorded in the cardioid polar pattern using a condenser mic, but many higher end mics also have an Omni recording polar pattern. And I would highly suggest that you get a microphone for your recording that has both cardioid and Omni, but Omni especially because Omni often gives a much more natural sound and it's much easier to use and get a better performance in many cases on Omni because there isn't the same proximity effect. So you don't get such a boomy sound and you can record much, much closer to the microphone. There are many, many reasons why you should use Omni, but I won't go over all of them right here. Actually, I'm gonna link in the video description and I'll try and put a little card here to a video all about Omni. And it was made by one of the editors of Sound on Sound magazine. And he goes over with many examples, all of the reasons and examples of why you should often use Omni instead of the cardioid standard polar pattern. The second thing that really helped my mixes was when I started making less EQ moves and actually doing less EQ to most tracks. Now this takes a while just learning how to EQ and what kind of sound you want. But most always, what you're looking for in a sound can be achieved in about three EQ moves. Usually there's some kind of low cut or low boost, some kind of mid cut or mid boost, and some kind of high cut or high boost. And within these three, you don't have, always have to use three, but within these three moves, you can most always get a sound to the point that you want it to. And then maybe after you do something else to the sound, like compress it, you might wanna go back and make another move. But most of the time, at least before something has already gone through processing, that's about the max EQ moves that you're gonna to want to do to anything. Now, part of that is also that I discovered a free plugin. I now own the paid version, but the free version has all the features that you need. And that plugin is called Tokyo Don Records TDR Slick EQ. And I have Slick EQ GE as well. But again, this free Slick EQ is my favorite EQ plugin. The reason it's my favorite EQ plugin is three things. One, that there's only a few different moves that you can make. So it's hard, harder to screw up sounds. Two, it's got a bunch of different band shapes that you can scroll through. So sometimes I might set all my EQ points and then scroll through the shapes and find actually a sound that I like better in, in one of the other models or other um, filter shapes. And then the fourth reason, third re and then the third reason is the most important. And that is that it does automatic gain compensation. Now, most always when we're mixing, we know that we should do gain compensation, which is where you level match for what you've increased uh, in volume, but it's really hard and a lot of times I admit myself as well, I actually don't do gain compensation perfectly on everything. I always wanna hear it a little bit louder because it sounds a little bit better. You're always trying to push for that, but Slick EQ does the best auto gain compensation of any plugin I've ever come across especially any EQ plugin. Now, there are other companies that have auto gain compensation built into their plugins, like Isotope does as well. It has a gain match function, but I've found that it's never really perfectly gain matched, but Slick EQ does the best job. It is perfect gain match compensation. So when you boost a frequency, because you're boosting, everything sort of sounds better when you boost it, but Slick EQ has an algorithm built into it to where you boost, the sound doesn't actually get louder. 
it just boosts that frequency and then it does an auto gain compensation within the plugin. It's really incredible. And I would say definitely it's the number one EQ plugin that I use. And if I could only use one EQ on an entire mix, it would definitely be Slick EQ. The third tip is that you should use mono reverbs and mono effects more often. I used to almost always use mono to stereo or stereo reverbs and delays and things and stereo always sounds better because it sounds bigger and it sounds it's more obvious but reverb is one of the fastest ways that you can screw up <laughs> one of your mixes and stereo reverb even more so because it's stereo it's across both sides and I really found that when I started using mono reverbs especially, but also mono delays and just mono effects, it really started to place things more specifically within a certain area in the mix, especially like mono reverbs on vocals. That I first heard this tip from Eric Valentine, one of my favorite producers and mixers. He said he mostly uses mono reverbs on vocals. And I was like, wow, I always used like mono to stereo or stereo reverbs, uh, but yeah, once I started using mono reverbs on vocals, and I only use stereo effects if it's for a very specific sound that I already in my head know that I want. Otherwise, I'm going to mono. The fourth tip kind of goes a little bit with that mono reverbs, and that is learn to make your vocals sound great before you add any reverb or any effects to them. Now. This was something that I would always do. I'd always get my <laughs> vocals kind of to the point where they were okay, and then I would add some reverb. And as soon as you add that reverb and just drench it in reverb, it sounds really good, you know? But that was more of something that I was doing to overcompensate for the fact that the vocal didn't actually sound that good without the reverb and without the delay. So I'd sort of wash things in reverb and delays and slap back delays and things like that to sort of try and hide the fact that I didn't really like the way that the vocal especially sounded, but really just anything in the mix sounded, maybe the guitars, or, but especially vocals. Vocals, I think, are probably the most important thing in any mix that has them because it's what people primarily listen to. So my tip is that if your vocal doesn't sound good, completely dry. If it doesn't sound great already dry, then you need to go back to something else that you did within the recording process. That could be as far back as the mic that you're choosing or the preamp that you're using with that mic or the compressor you're using or whatever that is. You need to go further back in the process and find out, maybe it's the performance, why your vocal doesn't sound great. Because you'll know that you've really captured a great vocal performance and mixed a great vocal when it sounds good completely dry. That's what I realized. The first vocals I ever did where I was like, oh, I love this vocal. I didn't even, I hadn't even added any reverb yet to it. And then when you add just a tiny bit of maybe like a mono room reverb, it's like, wow, everything's clear and sounds great. Number five is to gain down your S's and your consonants. So your K and T and F and all of, especially your S's, your S sounds, gain them down within the track before you do any processing to the vocal. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll slam a compressor in a way that I think it's going to kind of be similar to what the in compressor, how much it's going to be compressed. And then I will take all of the S's and I'll go in and find every single one of them and I'll gain them all down. And I'll do this with automation. So they're all gained down. And man, I'll tell you what, that was so huge in making my vocals sound more professional. Another thing is really not to use a de-esser very much. I used to use man, like three or four de-essers on a vocal trying to get those S sounds less in your face. And I realized that really what I needed to do was just take all of those S sounds and just gain them all down with automation. And then I might use like one de-esser on a mix and it's just catching, you know, just ever so slightly more for like a tonal shaping of the X S's. 
but it's not doing the gaining uh, of them down. And listen to a lot of really huge mixes now, like some Maroon 5 mixes or Justin Bieber, or whatever is like some pop radio or some rap. Listen to the consonant sounds and listen to those S sounds and hear how faint they are. You can barely hear them most of the time. And that's just because they've taken every single one of those sounds in the entire mix and they've gained them all down to the point that they're not really getting hit by the compressor. And so they're not sounding all weird and compressed and coming up so much in volume. I hope this helps you guys. These five tips made a huge difference to making my mixes sound professional. So I really think they will for you as well. Let me know, have you tried any of these? Did any of these make a big difference for you if you've already tried any of them? And are there any moments in your mix life where you've discovered something and realized, wow, I was really missing this and this is making a huge difference in my mixes because I would love to learn from you as well. So please leave those in the comments and I'll read them all. Take care.